So we have a compact tractor and a mini skid. And these are two totally different machines. However, there's a lot of overlap as far as usefulness goes that is shared between these two machines. So we have a compact tractor and a mini skid. And these are two totally different machines. However, there's a lot of overlap as far as usefulness goes that is shared between these two machines. Before we get started here, I wanna make something perfectly clear. I don't care what anybody else does. I really don't. I don't care what you buy, what you don't buy. I'm just here to pass on information. And this is a very unbiased opinion because I bought both of these machines with my own money. I got nothing in it, all right? All right. This right here is a Kubota LX4020. It's a great tractor. I really like this machine, cab tractor. Tons of horsepower and a frame that size. Great little tractor. Now this is a Vermeer CTX 160 mini skid. And as far as mini skids go, this is definitely one of the larger ones. This is a 40 horsepower machine and it is a little powerhouse. I've had this for a couple months now and I have found that I put more hours on this than any piece of equipment that I have. And the reason for that is it is just so handy to have around. It's super quick and easy to hop on and off. It's great down here at the sawmill for like moving firewood baskets, uh, bringing logs over to the sawmill, cutting up firewood. It's just a great, great machine and is very useful for what I do. So the tractor is primarily used for property maintenance where the mini skid is mostly used for our wood operation, whether it be firewood or sawing lumber. However, 
I do have several other attachments for this that work just fantastic. They're all Vernig, like this rotating log grapple, but I've got a four foot uh, brush cutter, like an extreme duty brush cutter for this. Works way better than like a brush hog on this tractor. I also have a power rake for this. Would be great for putting in new lawns. I used it out there in the food plot. That's another great attachment. I've got a grapple for it, you know, for cleaning up brush and moving logs and things like that. So even though this is my maintenance machine, I also use the mini skid for maintenance as well. So that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of overlap between the two. Now, although they physically kind of look to be about the same size, you know, the tractor is just a little bit bigger, that mini skid right there will lift and carry roughly, I'm not going to get into all the specs, double what this tractor will easily, probably more than that. I can carry a full basket of green red oak firewood with that mini skid, and that weighs in somewhere around 18, 1900 pounds. I could never do that with this tractor right here. So why am I telling you all this? Well, that's a good question, and the answer is this. It's my opinion that there's a lot of people out there that are unaware of the capabilities of a mini skid. I was that way up until about a year ago when I started doing some research on them. I was looking for something to use down here at the wood yard and uh, that was easy to transport, that had a big lift capacity, and you know with the mini skid you're under the CDL requirements that's kind of what I was looking for I started my journey uh, looking at wheel loaders like an Avant uh, there's all kind of those little wheel loaders now very very capable machines uh, huge lift capacities for their size they don't tear up a lawn they're a great machine the reason I chose not to go with a wheel loader is just the ease of on and off the machine. I do that all day long sometimes. It might be 30 times a day I'm on and off that mini skid. Well, when you're climbing into a wheel loader, it all takes time and it's just kind of a pain in the neck. And like I said, they're a great machine, but I think the mini skid was a better choice for me. Between the tractor and the mini skid, like I said, there's a lot of overlap and a lot of big differences. The mini skid is way more capable when it comes to lifting capacity. The tractor just comes in handy though when you're like brush hogging fields. You know, if I want to go down to my mom's driveway, which is a half mile away, dress up her driveway, I can zip down there in the tractor with the land plane, take care of it. Now I could, you know, load the mini skid up on my trailer, put the power rake on, and it would do a great job as well. But the tractor is just quicker and easier and more convenient in those ways. Now, some of the advantages the tractor has over the mini skid, it's got that nice cab on it. When it's snowing outside or when it's real hot, it's got air conditioning. That is an advantage for the tractor unless you use the mini skid like I do. You're on and off of it all day. And I would rather trade a heated cab and air conditioning just to be able to hop on and off the mini skid. I mean, there's times I'm on this for maybe five minutes max, you're back off at doing something else. With a mini skid, you are both like the operator and the laborer, just because it's so easy to get on and off. And something else I like about it, when you get on the mini skid, you can start it up, and as long as you are standing on the platform right here, everything is ready to go. All your auxiliary hydraulics, there's no safety switches, you don't have to engage anything. Standing on a platform, start it up, you're doing something. I like that. Another advantage the tractor has over the mini skid uh, when it comes to running through the lawn, the tires on the tractor are much easier on the lawn than the tracks on the mini skid. However, the mini skid isn't too bad at all. It is not like a full size skid loader when it comes to damaging a lawn. If you go straight in, straight out, you'll never even know that was in there. If you do a bunch of turning, yes, you're going to tear up the sod. So tractor advantage for working on a nice lawn. Now with the tractor, you know, you get your loader on the front of the tractor. You've got some nice lift capacity. As I already mentioned, the mini skid has way more lift capacity than this tractor. 
Basically though, the business end of the tractor is on the back where your PTO is, and that's good and bad. Depends what kind of attachments you're running. But with a tractor, you also get the old stiff neck syndrome quite a bit, because you're always turning around and looking out the back of the tractor to see what that attachment is doing. Now with the mini skid, you do not have that problem because all the attachments are on the front of the machine and you're not turning around all the time, stretching your neck, trying to see what's going on behind you. Now, as far as comfort on running this mini skid, the most I have ever ran this at one time without stopping was probably two and a half or three hours. And you know, the platform that you stand on it's got some suspension to it. It was not uncomfortable at all. Now, I know everybody's different, uh, but I like being able to see what's going on in front of me. I like having the attachments on the front of the machine. And, you know, if you've got bad knees or something like that, maybe you should steer clear of a mini skid. You know, for me, I kind of like it. So here's the point that I'm trying to make. I think a lot of people, as I said, are unaware of the capabilities of a mini skid. Now, if you have a real big property and you do a lot of property maintenance and you have like a wood yard and you were gonna buy just one machine, I would probably go with the tractor. If you have kind of a smaller property or you're doing most of your work in one area, you know, like a wood yard or something like that, I would highly recommend you look into the mini skids. It doesn't have to be a Vermeer. Uh, the only reason I chose Vermeer between that one and the Ditch Witch, I think they had about the biggest lift capacity that I could get. And the Ditch Witch, they were still like a year out. So I ordered the Vermeer. It only took about a month or so to get. And that's how I ended up with Vermeer. I did have just a few small issues with it so far. I had a bad roller on the Vermeer. I think it may have been the bearing was not pressed into the roller correctly from the factory. Things like that could happen. And the screen was acting up. And it was a little concerning because I just got the machine, but it's all fixed, it's all good to go. So hopefully I don't have any more problems. But if you follow the construction industry at all, you will notice uh, more and more manufacturers are making mini skids because more and more people are getting a good idea of the versatility of them. And like I said, that's a big machine as far as mini skids go. You can get a smaller one for probably two thirds the price, if not half the price uh, on a real small one compared to this one. I just wanted the big one for the most lift capacity that I could get. And I'm happy that I did that. You know, like with that rotating log grapple on there, I can move big oak logs. And you know, oak is heavy, really heavy. On a side note, by the way, uh, we just got back from Colorado the other day. And man, I don't know if it's Aspen or what those guys had in their trucks, but they had pickup trucks with racks as high as the cab filled with firewood. The whole bed, eight foot bed, filled up to the top of those racks. You can't do that with red oak. You just can't. I mean, if you had a one ton pickup, you might be able to, but that is a lot, a lot of weight. And out there, the wood is just way lighter. So that's something to keep in mind as well. If you have a wood yard out west somewhere and you're not into this heavy type of hardwood, you could probably get away with a smaller mini skid. And I know I'm kind of rambling on. And like I said, all I'm trying to do is just pass information along. But I think a lot of people would be better suited with a mini skid than a tractor. And I never thought I would say that until about a year ago when I started researching these things and then I confirmed that information once I started running mine. Now I gotta run up to the house for a minute. The hunt man is ready to go somewhere, but before I do, I just need to pull both of these machines ahead about 20 feet, okay? That's all I'm gonna do. But it's gonna show you one of the main reasons I love the mini skid.
So moving the mini skid was roughly twice as fast as getting in the tractor and moving it. Doesn't sound like a big deal. However, if you do that 30 or 40 times a day, that is a huge, huge difference. And that is one of the main reasons I love the mini skid for down here at the wood yard, plus the lift capacity. I do. It's uh, It lifts way, way more weight and comfortably than that tractor will. Now, you could get a much larger tractor, but once again, you're just getting into a much bigger machine, much larger footprint. These things are hard to beat for the right applications. All right, it is first thing in the morning, and I'm telling you, it just keeps getting prettier and prettier out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The leaves are coming right along. Today is supposed to be about, I think, 75 degrees, but the bottom falls out of it after that. I think tomorrow the high temperature is going to be in the low 50s, uh, so we'll be burning wood tomorrow. We actually started our first fire two nights ago. I was kind of uh, slow playing it. It's been getting down into the 30s in the morning, uh, but the other night it was pretty chilly in the building. It was the night the Steeler game was on because we watched a little bit of that. I started a fire. It was really nice. Uh, but coming right up, it looks like we'll be burning wood just about every day. We have that mini split in there so we can use it for heat as well, but I just like a fire. But anyway, I want to show you something. As we get closer to the holidays, people are always asking about hats and fire starter and stuff like that. We have decided to offer a bundle, which I think is pretty cool. In that bundle, you will get two 1.75 pound bags of fire starter. So out of these two bags right here, you could start probably 60 fires, if not more. So along with the fire starter, a very nice aluminum, hear that? Aluminum license plate with our new logo, Outdoors with the Morgans. A big sticker and a little sticker, Outdoors with the Morgans. And your choice of one hat. We've got the camo, the orange, the green, and the tan. So that will all be a bundle available on the website. Everything is discounted. You know, if you were to buy it separately, and it comes out to $68 for the hat, two bags of fire starter, license plate, stickers. Link will be in the description. All right, so right now I'm gonna go down to the wood yard, get the tractor. We're gonna take a ride out to the food plot, see how it's doing. We'll blow the leaves off the road on the way out. And by the way, the grass is coming in slowly, but it's coming in, which is good. Anytime I'm blowing leaves, I always have comments from people saying that I should just mulch them up and they're good for the grass, which they're probably right. Uh, but we just have too many of them way way too many leaves and they would get to about six inches thick on the yard and uh, In the springtime You just have a big muddy mess plus the oak leaves. I'd have to check with Levi, but I believe they take like a good two maybe even three years to decompose the leaves off the red oaks they're like big pieces of cardboard hitting the ground basically so I like to get them out of there and off the driveways as well because uh, it just turns into a muddy mess
All right, I just made one pass out to the clearing here, and all I do is come out, turn around, and go back. I could get a different shoot for this, but I kind of like the way it is now. But yeah, incredible attachment. It really is. But the leaves, man, they're hitting the ground fast now. And I get like anxious because I want it to stay just like it is. And I know it won't. So it's going to be beautiful for the next couple weeks. And then we'll have about five months of brown and gray. But that's okay, you know? Can't have everything. As you can see, I've got half the road done. On the way back out, I'll do the other half, but they're already starting to cover it up again. They're coming down hard. We have a wedding at our place in about a week and a half. My niece and her fiance are getting married at our place and we're having a little reception. And uh, I was hoping that it would stay like it is and hopefully the weather's good. Uh, but it is what it is, you know. The oaks will still look real pretty, probably for another three weeks at least. They are just starting to change. But uh, yeah, we got a lot to do to get ready for the wedding. It won't be a big deal. Uh, we're gonna have a big tent with heaters. We'll have the food in the garage of the building. Uh, I think everything's set up pretty well. We don't have to do a whole lot. We are just kind of hosting the venue, but uh, it should be a pretty good time. Last time, yeah, we had Hannah's wedding here as well. Must have been three years ago now. I don't know. So this is the next one. It seems to be a, a trend now. But anyway, right now I'm going to run down to the wood yard, cut some more firewood. Uh, Levi's down there splitting some wood right now. We'll get that taken care of, and then we'll see what we get into after that.
So this is one of the many things I love about this Vernig log grapple. You saw me bring that log from the pile down here by the splitter. I pick it up about halfway, keep one end off the ground, make all my cuts. I move the machine over to the end and I pick that log up, what's left, and suspend it out into the air, make more cuts, and then this is all I'm left with. One more cut and it's done, but I'm able to keep my chain out of the dirt. Like this 500i, I've had the same chain on that saw for I don't know how many months, and I have probably only sharpened it, I don't know, three or four times in 20, 30 cords of wood. And that's all from just keeping it out of the dirt and keeping it up off the ground. Works great for cutting firewood. I got some more wood cut up. Uh, Levi just ran the hunt man somewhere. When he gets back, he'll split some more firewood. But before we wrap this video up, I need to show you something really, really nice. So look at these two chairs right here. Outdoors with the Morgans. These are oak. Got some maple here. Ambrosia maple in the center. These are gliders. Two of them. And these were a gift from a very, very nice and generous man that watches our channel. His name is Chris. He dropped these off last night. Incredible woodworker, and these are just beautiful. Uh, they have a sealer on them, but we're gonna keep these indoors. They're gonna make their home here in the game room, but they are just outstanding. I asked Chris if he wanted to be on video. He did not, and that's fine but he is a fine, fine woodworker. But yeah, red oak, all stainless hardware. He said he got the plans from a glider bench and then just decided to make them into a couple chairs. He makes a lot of these and he does not sell them. He gives them away to people. He uh, donates them for worthy causes, things like that. They'll raffle them off for some charity. And he watches our channel and he wanted to make these and they are just outstanding. We love them. So thanks, Chris, for the beautiful chairs. This, by the way, we need to put together. We have another section, a little fence around the wood stove because uh, grandson Bo is on the move. And uh, until he figures out how hot a wood stove is, we're gonna have to run a fence around it. But anyway, I think that's about it for today's video. Don't forget, if you are interested in a bundle, uh, two bags of fire starter, a hat, Aluminum license plate, two stickers. There will be a link in the description. And probably next week we will have all the fire starter available again because it is, it's burn season. It is. It's coming right up. Appreciate y'all being here and I will catch you on the next one.